Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg, and in this video I'm taking another look at the Falcon A1 by Creality. In the first video, I dove deep into the features and the details on the Falcon A1 machine. I'll have a link to that video down below. In this video, I'm going to be making a number of different projects on different materials. Now this video isn't going to be about how to make those projects, instead it's going to be more about how the machine makes those projects on those different materials. And with that, let's get started. Let's get started by checking out just a couple of the key features that make this Falcon A1 unique on today's laser market. If you'd like to dive into more detail about this machine, I'll have a link down below for you. The machine features a high quality 10 watt laser module. The spacious work area comes in at 381 by 305 millimeters and in inches, or what I like to call freedom units, that's 15 by 12 inches. The A1 comes largely pre-assembled with only needing placement of the laser module, the air assist pump, and the included exhaust hose. It's fully enclosed and includes a nice easy access emergency stop button on the side. The top lid folds open for easy access as does the front. The lid has this integrated camera system. Not only is it going to give me a perfect view of the work area for perfect project alignment, when I'm using Creality brand materials that have a QR code with it, the camera is going to automatically scan this QR code and give me the perfect engraving and cut settings. When it comes to setting up and using the machine, Creality has me covered with a knowledge sharing platform in the form of a Creality wiki page. The Falcon A1 is going to be compatible with a number of different software packages starting out with that free software from Creality called Falcon Design Space. This is going to be available for Mac OS, PC, and there's even versions for mobile apps or mobile devices as well. There's also the free laser dribble software that's compatible with the machine, and of course the ever popular Lightburn software. In today's video, to take full advantage of all the features on this machine, I'm going to be using the software from Creality, the Falcon Design Space. Now it's time for what I think is my favorite part of the video, and that is making projects on a laser machine. And once again, these projects that I'm going to be doing, it's not so much about sharing with you how to make these projects, it's more about watching the machine and seeing how it makes today's projects. Now, speaking of the projects, the first one that I have coming up is going to be using some Creality brand bass plywood. This being Creality brand material is going to have a scannable QR code for the machine. So not only do we get to see the machine make a project, we're also going to check out just how well it scans the QR code to give me the perfect settings for this first project. I thought before we dive into this first project, we'd uh, take a little tour of the Creality software. On the left hand side, we're going to have our basic drawing tools. I can draw some shapes. There's also a text tool, a pen tool, and there's a built in image library. Just check out all these images that are built in with the free software. I can also import files just like I did here. I'll click on my art file that I've imported and I get a few more options that pop up on the top of the screen. I can combine objects. I can create an array for batching things. I can flip an object, align it to other objects, create an offset, split and close, do a smart fill, uh, manually change the position. I prefer just to drag it around on the screen. I can also change the size of it, which I always prefer to just drag and grab a corner and drag that around. But sometimes when I want a very specific size in here, I could say I want the width to be 75 millimeters and it will change it to exactly that. I can rotate it. I can also round the corners where it makes sense to. And that brings us over to the right hand side of the screen where I have different layers. Right now, just one object on the screen is just going to be one layer. Down here, we've got the basswood material selection, but again, we're going to be uh, using the QR code for it to automatically plug in the perfect settings for this first project. When I move over to the camera tab, 
I can retake a new photo and that will use the camera and the machine, snap an image, and now I know exactly where to place my object up near the corner of the work material and I can manually resize if I want to. So pretty cool features. I think that covers it. There's certainly a lot more features in the software and there's a lot of cool features. If I import a picture file, there's a built-in trace function, which is really neat. And I've worked with that a little bit off camera and it works really well. And that's something I typically don't see with free software like the uh, Falcon Design Space, but it is included with it. And in my opinion, it works really well. Now with that quick tour officially complete, I'm going to start the first project. And for that, I'm going to scan the materials QR code. I can open the front door and just present the card in front of the camera. It beeped saying that it already latched onto it and it scanned the code and gave me the perfect settings. And look at that, it identified the QR code as bass plywood, three millimeter thick, which is exactly what it is. And I wanna update the, the processing material. I wanna do that on all layers, even though I only have the one layer. For me, it's just a good practice to update it for all layers. By scanning that QR code, it automatically popped in the line engraving settings that I need, a speed of 3000 millimeters per minute at a power level of 40%. This project, I also wanna cut it out. I'll select my object and use offset effect and I think we'll offset this out by about a millimeter, two or three. That looks good. And over here, I'm going to click the plus button. It's going to add another layer. So I'm going to now click on that offset line that we just made. And now I'm going to click on that new layer. And there we go. I'm going to switch that over to a line cut. And once again, because I scanned that QR code, it automatically is going to adjust the speed to 350 millimeters per minute with a power level of 100%. And because I took a picture of my material, I know that I'm up near the corner of it. So I've got the perfect placement and it's really that easy. I can just hit the start button and we can start creating today's project. The first project's complete and it turned out perfect. All the line engraving detail is exactly the way it should be and the full cutout turned out perfectly. I did give this a quick wash with some LA's Totally Awesome. It's still continuing to dry. So while it does that, I'm gonna set this off to the side and we're gonna start on the next project, which is going to be this stone I found on a beach. This next project, I'm going to use one of the graphics built into the software. Once again, for that, I just go over to the image icon and I can scroll through. I, of course, picked out this happy little bird. I thought that would look neat on this beach stone that I found. And let me zoom back a little bit. I'm going to navigate over to camera and I've got the stone already placed within the machine and I'm going to take a new photo and we'll see where that stone is placed and I kind of guess pretty close, but we're going to select everything on this bird and just kind of resize it a little bit and get it placed just right. I like the way that that looks. When I switch back over to layers, we're going to see that it is still on bass uh, plywood or basswood board. And of course, that's not what I have in the machine. Right now, there's currently not a, uh, a built-in library for stone. There's just too many different types. I could certainly build my own library and add my settings into that, uh, into this area, but I think we're going to save that for a different video. Instead, what I did is I just overrode the settings to something that I think would work. 
my experience with stone is to run at a higher power level at a lower speed. So that's exactly what I did here. I'll be running at 600 millimeters per minute with a power level of 85%. And my line interval is going to be 0.1 millimeters, which equates to roughly about 254 lines per inch. This is all set up already. It's just really that easy to create projects with the Falcon A1. I'll get the exhaust turned on and we'll watch a video montage of a bird being engraved on this happy little rock. Project number two is complete, and this one as well looks perfect. Let's get a close-up look. The engraving is everything that I'm looking for, and best of all, this is 100% weatherproof, which is great because this is going to be going outside in a flower garden. The next project, I have one of these anodized dog tags. The one that I've already have in the machine is going to be black. It's just going to be easier for it to show up on the camera. We'll head over to the computer and check out some of the settings I'll be using. For this project, I've imported my own image. Let me zoom in a little bit. It's going to be a dog paw with a heart around it. I thought it's going to be pretty fitting for this next project. I already have the material placed in the machine and I'll navigate over to the camera tab and take a new photo and we'll find out where I place that. Right now the machine is a little bit in the way, so I'm going to just manually or automatically rehome it through the software. And once that's complete, I'll take a new photo and that uh, part of the machine should be out of the way. There we go. That looks good. And now I can grab my artwork, shrink it down, move it over and get it perfectly aligned up. This is just one of the many great things about having a built-in camera system on a laser machine. It makes the alignment of the artwork up to the work material really, really easy. The other thing that I can see is that my object, my material that I placed in the machine is at a slight angle. So I think I'm going to give it a little bit of a rotate. I think that matches up pretty good. Yeah, I think that'll be perfect. For the settings, I'm going to go over actually to the material library and for my black anodized aluminum dog tag, I'm going to go over to metal and the next closest thing in the library is going to be an aluminum business card that has a black coating on that. I've already selected that and because I'm going to be doing a fill engraving on this, it automatically once again popped in the settings that I need, which is going to be a speed of 5,000 millimeters per minute with a power level of 80%. Line interval once again at 0.1 millimeters, which equates to about 254 lines per inch. And just like that, I'm ready to start this next project. So we'll check that out and check out the results. All right, so I had that on the wrong layer. I'm gonna switch that over to fill engraving and let's give that another try. Let's see how this turned out. And by the way, to keep this material in place, I did put a little bit of double-sided sticky tape on the back and well, that's really on there. Maybe I put a little bit too much on there. Looks really nice. I've got a nice high contrast between the black and the engraving. For our last project, I have one of these nice wooden keychains. I'll get this placed inside the machine and we'll check out the graphic for this fourth and final project. I have the keychain placed inside the machine. Focus has been set back in the software. We're getting a pretty good idea now of just how easy it is to create projects with the Creality software and the Falcon A1 machine. For this last project, let's check out the graphic. I like to bike, so I picked out this bike graphic that'll be engraving. Once again, I went over to the materials library and picked out bass board, 
I think it's about four millimeters thick. I hit confirm and I'm going to be doing a fill engraving. And once again, it already put in the correct parameters for me of a speed of 3000 millimeters per minute with a power level of 40% the line interval remains the same as it did on the previous project. I'll navigate over to the camera tab and update the photo to see where I have the keychain placed. That looks good and I'll just select my graphic, drag it over and resize it to fit accordingly. There, I'm just taking this black box here, that's the outline of my graphic, and I'm just lining it up to the top of the keychain, and that looks good, and I'll put this back exactly where I would like it. And just like that, I'm ready to start this fourth and final project. Just like all the other projects, this last one turned out perfect. And even though this is a small keychain, I still have all the rich detail that I'm looking for. Thanks for joining me in today's video. It was a lot of fun. It was fun because the machine is easy to run. As we saw in the software, getting a project set up and sent out to the machine is very quick and easy. And we we're able to make a lot of these fun projects in today's video. And I hope that you had fun watching today's video. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Not only is it a great way to help this channel grow, it's an awesome way to connect content like this with other great viewers just like you. And until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.